There are a variety of natural language processing techniques out there, and the one I'll be talking about in this video is sentiment analysis. So let's say you are a manager of a company that sells hats and also shirts, and you want to know what your customers are thinking about your hats and shirts. Do they have positive feelings about them or negative feelings about them? So then you go to your call center, and you see that a bunch of people have called in about your hats and your shirts. And you could go through all of these and listen to every single message, um, but that would take you a really long time. So instead, you can use an NLP technique to automatically tag these as positive or negative calls. And then at the end of the day, you can figure out that people tend to think that your hats are pretty good and that your shirts are not very good. So this concept is called sentiment analysis. In this video, I'm going to be going through the details of how to do sentiment analysis in Python. So the input to this step is a corpus. And we've talked about this in previous videos, but a corpus, you can think of it as a collection of text documents. And in this case, um, we want to keep this collection of text documents um, in the order that it's written, because if we have a word, let's say, great in there, we want that to be flagged as positive, but if we have a word that's not great in there, or a phrase that's not great, we want that to be flagged as negative. So we want to keep all of our original text in the original order so that we can capture these sentiments. The tool that we're going to be using is called TextBlob. This is a Python library that's built on top of NLTK and it's a lot easier to use than NLTK, and it also provides some additional functionality, such as um, sentiment analysis. And the output to this step will be a sentiment score for every comedian. Um, in this case, we have transcripts for um, a bunch of comedy routines. So for every comedy routine for a specific comedian, we're gonna be given a sentiment score so how positive or negative that comedian is, and then also a subjectivity score, which is how opinionated that comedian is. So this is what the code looks like for sentiment analysis using text blob. You can import text blob, and then you can text blobify your text. So in this case, my phrase is I love NLP, and then you just do dot sentiment. And this would be the output of my code right here. So in this case, I have the polarity. If it's positive one, that means it's really positive sentiment. Negative one is a negative sentiment. And there's also subjectivity. So positive one means um, there's some opinion in that phrase. And then zero means that uh, the phrase is more about facts and less about opinions. So at this point, we know everything about text blob, right? And we can start using it. We'll jump right into the Jupyter Notebook. But actually, you should not jump into the Jupyter Notebook just yet, because before you import and use a module, you always have to understand what's going on behind the scenes. And this is something I mentioned in the first part of this video series in the Data Science Venn Diagram and how there's that danger zone. So if you know how to code and you know what you want to do, you can just download um, or import a library and start using it but it's really dangerous if you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And you really should understand the math behind the scenes. And so before we dive into the Jupyter Notebook, I want to go over what's actually happening in TextBlob. So this is a researcher, and um, what he's done is he's taken a bunch of words, so you can see all the words on the left over there, and for every word, he's flagged or tagged it um, as a certain polarity and a certain subjectivity. And so let's take a look at the word great. If you look at all of those tags, then you'll see that within all those words that that researcher um, tagged, there's actually multiple uh, lines for the word great. And these, um, there are multiple lines because every uh, row here has a different definition for that word great. And so you can see on the right there that uh, there are different polarities and subjectivities for each of these words. 
over there. You also, I just want to note that there's a WordNet ID, um, which connects to Princeton's WordNet, and then there's also the part of speech tab. But the main things to note here are that the polarity and subjectivity are different for each of these uh, rows of data. And so what text blob does is if you if it sees the word great, it's going to take the average of all of those polarities and subjectivities that you saw in the last slide. And let's see it, let's say it um, shows you the word not great, or so shows you the phrase not great. What's happening here is it's actually just taking great and then multiplying the polarity by negative 0.5. Let's say you see the phrase very great. What's happening here is it's multiplying both the polarity and subjectivity by 1.3. And it, for polarity, it caps at 1. And then finally, I am great. Um, what's happening here is I and am don't have a polarity or subjectivity. And so you see the same scores as great at the top. So to summarize what's happening with text blob, what it does is it finds all the words and phrases in your text that it can assign a polarity and subjectivity to, and then it averages them all together. So for one body of text, or in our case, a comedy transcript, it's going to have one um, subjectivity and one polarity score assigned to it. So this isn't the most sophisticated technique. In fact, we're not using any machine learning here. This is solely a rules-based technique, but it is a good starting point if you want to do some sentiment analysis. If you do want to use a statistical method, one of the most popular ones out there is called Naive Bayes for text data, and I'll be going through that in another one of my videos. All right, so now that we've gone through how TextBob is calculating sentiment analysis, um, calculating these sentiment scores, we're going to go through the Jupyter Notebook. So all of my code, again, can be found on GitHub at a dash of data. All right, here's my notebook for sentiment analysis. So the introduction here, you see we're using the text blob module, and then the labels it outputs are polarity and subjectivity. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to read in a pickle file. In my past video, I talked about how you can pickle a file basically saying, or you can pickle a data set. Um, so let's say you've cleaned a data set, you can then pickle it or save it, and then now that I have this new Jupyter Notebook, I can read in that pickle file or read in that data set. And what I'm reading in here is my corpus of comedy transcripts. So you see I have all the different comedians and then their full transcript for one of their comedy routines. So now I'm going to use text blob. What I'm doing here is I'm um, going to find the polarity and the subjectivity of every single transcript. And you can see I'm applying those functions here. And at the end of the day, for every transcript, I get a polarity score and a subjectivity score. So what I always like to do is plot my results. And here, you can see on the x-axis, I have the polarity, so whether it's positive or negative, and on my y-axis, I have the subjectivity, so whether it's more opinionated or fact-based. And every comedian here is rated on these two attributes. And you see, specifically, Ali Wong, who I'm most interested in, um, she is similar to Ricky Gervais and uh, John Mulaney. All right. So that was pretty interesting. And now I'm going to take it a step further. So instead of just looking at a comedy routine um, as a whole, I want to divide it up over time. So I want to know, does a comedian start out negative and then end up positive? Um, or is there a different pattern in there? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split each routine into 10 different parts. So I'm looking at all the text data. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that text data and split it into my 10 parts. So let's take a look at our original data again. These are our transcripts with all the text data. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split up that text data. So if I scroll back up to the top here, you'll see this is the beginning of Ali Wong's uh, comedy routine. And this is one block of text data. 
and then now I've split it, see this comma, I've split it into the second block of text data, and so on. And at the end of the day, I'm going to do this for all 12 comedians, and each comedian is going to have their transcript broken up into 10 different parts. And then what I'm going to do is for every um, part, I'm going to look at the polarity of that part. So this is one uh, comedian right here, and you can see this is the 10 parts of their routine. Okay, so let's plot this. I'm going to show the plot for one comedian up here, and then down here I'm creating all these subplots to show the uh, plots for all the comedians. And you can see that here's Ali Wong, and she is generally, this orange line shows uh, zero polarity, meaning they're neutral. And you can see that she's generally pretty positive. Then you have Bo Burnham over here who starts really positive, goes negative, and then ends up really positive. So looking at all this, I see that Ali Wong stays generally positive, and then similar comedians are Louis C.K. and Mike Birbiglia. So Louis C.K. and Mike Birbiglia. You see they're both generally positive throughout. And then on the other hand, you have some more extreme patterns. So I mentioned Bo Burnham, and then also Dave Chappelle. You can see he gets pretty negative towards the end of his routine. All right, so you can do this additional exercise if you'd like. This is the end of my sentiment analysis tutorial. Next, I'll be talking about topic modeling.